Welcome to Nitek. I'm Edward St. Pay. Well, tonight we are going to introduce you to a female bodybuilder. Yes, there are female bodybuilders out there working very hard to compete in upcoming competitions, and we're going to find out a little bit about the training regimen of a female bodybuilder and meet a young lady by the name of Natasha Donald, and also known as G.I. Jane on the competitive circuit. Coming up next on Nitek. Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is handpicked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. Welcome to the show. Well, uh, this marks a first for us. Our first official bodybuilder <laughs> who competes, and it happens to be a woman. <laughs> and Natasha Donald is yes, with sir. us. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Now, Natasha. Yes, that's sir. That's a, a little different way of pronouncing it because it's a it's it's a German pronunciation. Yes, sir. Natasha. So, so tell us uh, how you are linked with uh, with Germany. Okay. Um, my parents were in the military. My dad was in the Air Force. And they were stationed over there for about seven years. And then I came alone. And then uh, we stayed over there maybe about a year or so and moved to North Dakota. And then they retired here in Jackson. So my um, godparents are actually German. So you've been back to Germany. Yes, we go back all the time. I love it. I wish I could move over there and just leave. <laughs> well, well, tell us about, about that. What's that culture like? Oh, it's awesome. The food is so good. Like, you haven't had a real bratwurst or a schnitzel or a brooch in, until you went to Germany. Like the bratwurst over here, nothing compared. The beer, they make the beer at the restaurant so you can actually go and see them making it. Yeah, that's, it's awesome. That's really it something. is. <laughs> okay, so tell us your story. You uh, were an athlete, you ran track. Right? Yes, sir. And, uh, and then uh, after your career as a, as a student athlete, let's right. say, uh, you then discovered bodybuilding. Right. Uh, well, I was 17. I used to um, run track, and my dad got me a membership at the gym. Back then, it was called Powerhouse. Now it's Quest Fitness. It's off of Beasley. And um, I used to just kind of train over there to get ready for the season. And there was these ladies that were working out, and they had these little bit of shorts on, they sports bras, and they were bodybuilders. And I was like, wow, I want to be like them one day. And then I went to college and I did the ROTC thing for Air Force and then I switched over and did Army. And then I had a baby and when I moved back home, I lost the weight and I came back to the same gym, started working out and of course muscle memory kicked in and everybody's like, are you gonna compete? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I just kind of got that bug. It's like once you get the bug, then it takes over you. That, you know, competing just takes over you. So when you started training seriously as a bodybuilder, yes, sir. what happened? Did you lose weight or gain weight? I lost weight. I've lost 50 pounds in 10 months. I did the um, Herbalife Nutrition. I actually am a wellness coach for them. Um, I sell it independently. And I do um, the supplements and I started working out, lost 50 pounds and competed last July in the Mississippi. And you're uh, going to be competing again? Yes, sir, in May, that? the Southern Classic. So this is a big one. I'm really excited because... Like I said, it's nothing like competing, the smell of the hose and oil and everybody seeing them with their um, tans because you get tanned and having your suit on. It's, it's just, it's an experience. So now, how important is the posing aspect of bodybuilding? Oh, it's important. When I say we pose every day from January of last year until competition, like posing is another workout because you have to stand there and do these mandatory poses for a minute and then you have to, you know, do these side poses and it's another workout. Like when you get done, your whole body hurts. Because when you start to pose, you're actually straining, you're putting right. pressure on the muscle. Right. right, you have to be in contact with every single muscle, which means you have to learn your body. So it's like real character building because you never know how long you're gonna be up there. You don't know how many competitors are gonna be up there. and you know, if they like you, then you have to stay up there. So you have to train for that and condition your body, condition your lungs and stuff. How does a woman train the muscles and become stronger and more muscular, mm -hmm. but still retain 
femininity? Um, I think it's just the way that I carry myself. And then a lot of that comes from being natural. Um, you, a lot of times when you get, you know, into this other stuff or whatever, you start to lose your uh, feminine aspect because you're adding testosterone and stuff like that. But um, I've never lost it. You know, I still dress like a lady and carry myself like a lady. So I, I'm natural. So, you know, that's how I think you keep it. A lot of these ladies want to get bigger and look like a man and all that stuff. So... You know. Yeah, yeah. So right. So you, you try to, um, uh, for for one thing, uh, stay off of the male uh, hormones. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, exactly. That, that That's help. the first thing. Stay off of the male hormones. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Uh, and wear red lipstick. Too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's what I do. I actually forgot my earrings, but normally I have my earrings on. You see, I have all of my bracelets and, you know, I'm a jewelry, you know, fanatic. So I, I keep the crazy colors and stuff like that. So you know that I am definitely feminine. It, you know, you're supposed to have that illusion. You're supposed to look hard, but not actually be hard. So when uh -huh. to touch, it's supposed to be soft, but you're supposed to just give that illusion that you're hard and all muscular and stuff like that. Right. Now, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the, uh, the pose and how important that is. All right, well, let's talk about diet. Now, okay. Right now, before we went on the air, we were talking and we talked about the bulking up right, period. Right. So tell us about bulking up and, and why you're bulking up, getting ready for uh, going into a show. Right. Um, so last year, I, lost, I was losing weight, so I was trying to get the fat away. And now this year, I'm trying to add more muscle. So we started bulking maybe around October and you just um, kind of slowly add things back in like the peanut butter, the bread, the red meat, because I've been off red meat for a long time. And that was pretty much just it, just um, increasing my calories and my protein to make sure that I have more muscle so that when it's time to cut down, I actually have something to cut because you don't want to cut into your muscle. Then you start to look all small and, you know, look like you don't have anything and you don't want to get on stage like that. You want to look full. So that's the whole purpose of bulking during this time. And then maybe around February, the end of February, then I'll start to shred and start the actual competition diet, which is, you know, the same meals every day. It's no seasonings. So what are carbs. the meals? For example, bulking up right mm -hmm. now. Give us an example of a meal. Okay, so I do about two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as my morning snack. Um, I might do a hamburger or I might do um, a steak sandwich or something like that. But I'm actually doing my protein shakes with my oatmeal as opposed to doing my protein shakes as one meal and then my oatmeal and chicken as another meal. How many scoops of protein? I do. So with the Herbalife, it's two canisters. So I'm doing four scoops in all. I do two scoops of our Formula One healthy meal and I do another two scoops of protein. So maybe 40 grams of, of um, protein? It's 24 grams of protein, but I do add more now that I'm bulking. But you know, your body's only gonna take about 40 something, so the rest of it is just gonna flush it out. So you could pack on 60 grams of protein, but your body's not gonna take all of that. Okay, so you're bulking now, right. and the competition is what month? It's in May, at the end of May. So I'll, like I said, I'll start the competition diet at the end, maybe like the middle of February, where I'll do the um, oatmeal and chicken, I'll do a protein shake, you know, um, sweet potatoes and chicken, broccoli, the brown rice and stuff like that. It's pretty simple. It's no seasoning. It's a lot of water, you know, eating a every, a How lot much of water. water. I've taken about a gallon and a half because I realized last year two gallons was too much for me. So that's a lot of water. It is. It is. I mean, do you find yourself having to go to the bathroom all day long? Oh, all day long. But you want to definitely, um, that's how you feel your muscles. And so you're going to be sweating. So you want to make sure that you're putting back in what you're losing, you know, through working out and stuff like that. And you need that water when working out and especially with posing. Cause like I said, that's a whole nother workout. Right. You know, seeing guys at the gym who get ready to compete, mm -hmm. they, We've talked about the same scenario, you right. know, the bulking up and then the shredding down. Right. And by the time they shred down, they, I mean, every muscle is, every muscle right. is Right, you see cut. everything, right. Everything. That's why I told you when I first came on, I was like, I feel thick because we're bulking. So, right. you know, you smooth out, the abs smooth out, and right. you get all bulky. But then when it's time to cut, watching yourself transform in itself is just... It's an amazing feeling. You're cutting out the carbs, too, when you're going you do, into Right, that. you do complex carbs, so I'll cut out the bread and stuff like that, but I'll definitely keep, um, I'll add the sweet potatoes back, and I'll add the um, brown rice and go back to my oatmeal, and I just keep it simple with broccoli because I'm, I'm pretty much allergic to everything, so 
I keep it simple. Well, okay, now, uh, when you're cutting out all the carbs, when you go in the shredding phase, mm -hmm. does that make you, like, uh, tense, anxiety-ridden? Yes, it does, yes. It? That diet is something else. I tell people, don't even come around me. Like, my boss said, I'm going to have to hire you some new help because it definitely kind of gives you a little attitude because you're, you're tired, first of all, because you're working out a lot. And then you don't have all these calories like you did have. And Why is it that when you cut out the carbs, just people start to get, they, they get antsy? You they get do. Aggravated. Yeah, you get aggravated. Your temper gets very Why short. Why is that, I wonder? It must I be something know. to on the brain, huh? <laughs> Hopefully this year I won't be as bad as I was last year because I was cantankerous. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think what I've heard is, you know, that when you go into that phase and the more you stay away from the carbs, the crankier you get. <laughs> yes, you yes. Know? You don't have any energy. Like I tried last yeah. year to kind of do a sweet potato the size of my fist. As you can see, my fist is small. It didn't work. I feel like I was going to faint. And I had an attitude. It was like, don't come around me. Don't talk to me. Don't breathe loud. It's like all of your senses. You start feeling everything. You can hear everything. It's bad. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go to a break. Now, when we come back from the break, uh, would you show us some uh, of the poses? Yeah. Do some I would pose love down. to. I would pose love down. to. Right. It'd be, this will be a first for 19. <laughs> we have... Uh, a, a pose down. Oh, right. Oh, I love to pose. So, shoot, I do it every day in the mirror. They say the mirrors are supposed to be to help you with your form, but I kind of get caught up in the mirrors looking at myself. I know it's bad. Well, but. you're trying to get the perfection of the, <laughs> right. of, of the, and it's, it's almost, it's an art, isn't it? It is. It is an art to transform your body and to stand up there like, and to, you and know, to show it off to best exactly. advantage in front of the judges. It's art. It's definitely it's, is. It's art. It it's, really that's is a human art. Life. Yeah, human art. Human art, really. Yeah. So, okay, well, Natasha Donald <laughs> with us, and we'll have the pose down after these words. Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is handpicked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. Well, welcome back. We're talking to, to Natasha Donald. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce it right. Natasha. Natasha. Yeah, they, there you got Natasha. it that time, right. Natasha Donald. <laughs> now, you are known in the bodybuilding world as G.I. Jane. G.I. Jane. And why, and why is that? Um, actually, my boyfriend created that name. You know, I shaved my head and I was in the gym. He comes up with these just crazy names, but G.I. Jane, it, it stuck. It's a and, good name. Yeah, it did. And I didn't think it was going to create an audience, but, you know, I... My story, I'm an open book, so I have no problem telling people, you know, how I got started with um, bodybuilding, how it saved my life, because... Tell us about that. Okay. How did it save your life? Well, um, I, come, I had an abusive past. You know, I've, I'm a survivor of domestic violence, sexual assault, and then I had alopecia, so bodybuilding just, it gives you that release, being in the gym. You can just release all stress and all of that, and like I said, I, I've committed myself to helping other ladies, single moms, because I was a single mom, to, you know, get out of that postpartum depression and just get out there and lose that weight. And you suffered from postpartum depression? I did. Depression. I, I suffered from postpartum depression. I gained, because when I first had the baby, I was like 140-some pounds, but then dealing with the postpartum depression and single motherhood, I got all the way up to 171 pounds. And for my height at five, even that was tapping on overweight. Now, uh, let me ask you, what exactly is part postpartum depression? I know it's mm -hmm. depression after you have a, a right. baby. But why does this occur? Did the doctors tell you? What is, know. It what just, is it? It just kind of, you get in this rut, you know, the baby's crying and you don't have anybody to help you and you kind of feel helpless because you can't stop the baby from crying. You don't know what's wrong. And then you're doing it by yourself and, you know, dishes have to be washed and you got to take a shower and 
it just it piles on you you know that that crying the teething just comes after another you kind of get stuck in that rut then you gain the weight and you just kind of feel like okay well now i don't have time to go to the gym because who's gonna watch the baby okay so give us the antidote for postpartum depression what did you what, what did, did you do? discover to alleviate it right going to the gym my dad was like you got to get up and he first got me a membership we have a neighbor who had, owns a pilates studio in Kenmark, and so he would come home and give me just getting out getting out and putting some clothes on actually helps and so just that hour of getting out and doing do pilates, you do pilates i do well, I what love about it. pilates it's good because you're stretching and it's calm and it's a release and you just relax and that hour away from the house it does. It did me real good. It seems like it's almost like yoga. Almost, it is. It is almost it's, it's like almost that. like meditating. Right. It was meditating. Stretching she out. had these machines, so that was good. But then I wanted to get back into lifting weights because I had lift weights before. So just pumping that iron in the gym and watching the pounds, you know, to shed off. I was like this feeling. I want other ladies to feel what I feel and to know that, you know, it's going to be OK. You just get out the house and walk. And, you know, I started at home. I had a ball, a mat. I had some dumbbells, a kettlebell, and I made it work, you know? And so now I've tried to put myself out there like, look, this is, I'm here to help you all. And it just kind of created a name, you know? Cause I, like I said, I don't have no problem telling my story, you know, with the alopecia and having to shave my head. So, so. tell us about the alopecia. Okay, so um, alopecia is autoimmune disease. Um, it's where your hair attacks itself and it causes the hair to come out from the root. And I have the areata, which means it's smooth, round patches. And I got diagnosed with that back in 05 after Katrina. And then I wore What weeks. causes that? I just, they said it was like genetics mixed with little stress. Like, you know, my mom had thyroid. just, you know, a mixture of things. And so can't I really pin it down to anything. Couldn't really pin it down to anything. And so it grew back for a while. But then, of course, after I had the baby, the stress caused it to come out. And I just got tired of wearing wigs, so I just woke up one morning. I'm very spontaneous. I, if When I wake up and say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Sure. So I shaved it off. I just woke up and, and said, hey, I'm tired of it. And so I actually started a walk at Ole Miss a couple years ago called Walk for Hair, and I send money to the foundation every year. I just had one back in September, which is um, Alopecia Awareness Month, and I had one over there um, in Lake Over Office Park. We walked down to the echelon and back. So and it was a great experience. Well, you know, maybe in years back past, having no hair would have been an unusual thing. Right, but these right. days we were talking, it's really right. not that unusual. Right. It's almost like a style statement. It is. It's and a lot of people love it. They're like, wow, you have the confidence to do that. Yeah. And I want other ladies to know that, you know, just get out there and be you. As long as you're happy with you, that's what matters. Like, don't worry about what people think. And that's for years what I was worried about. And when I stopped worrying about that, that's when the pounds fell off. And that's when I was like, look, I'm going to shave my head, so mm -hmm. I love it. And so you just kept it like that? I just kept it like that. So <laughs> when you're competing as a bodybuilder, you probably are the only person with, yeah, with the hair I think shame. so. I think so. For the, for the women. And then it, it's easy because I'm in the gym all the time, so it's it's no maintenance. You know, I get my hair shaved no every week. and <laughs> something to say for that. Right, no maintenance. Don't you don't have to get have the hair dryer <laughs> out or any of that no, stuff. No, you no. Know? I go to my brother's a barber down at the train station, and I go down there, and he shaves my head with a straight razor, and I'm out the door 30 minutes later. <laughs> that's something. That's something. It that's is. Something. I love it. I normally keep it, like, clean. He would be mad if he saw me with this little stubble here. <laughs> right. You don't have much. Just a little stubble. Right. Just a little stubble. So, so okay. Now, uh, we're going to uh, do some pose down. Okay. So, I'm going to, I guess we're going to go to a, a long shot. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I'm just going to sit here. And, you, <laughs> and, there, uh, and there's uh, there's the audience out there. Okay. And that's the judges out right, there. Right. The judges. So, okay. So, uh, it, would you do the routine? I will. Okay. Good. I will. Okay. Well, here we go. Okay. Natasha. <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so this is our mandatory pose. We just have to kind of stand like this, you know, in the beginning. That would be the opening? That would be the opening. And then we kind of turn to the side here. That's the side chest. And now with that, you want to see the side chest? Right, you, you want, want to see the see, side. You want to see the legs? Right, the legs, the triceps, the glutes, you know, the forearms. Then you would turn to the back and then... Same thing. You want Same to see thing all here. That. Mm -hmm. This would just be the mandatory turns. Mm -hmm. And then you would turn here. Same thing for this side here. You want to squeeze everything. When you're looking at the judges, are you mm -hmm. smiling at Yes, them? yes. My coach would be mad if I wasn't up here smiling. So you're then trying, what you're trying to do is make a good impression on the judges. Exactly. You want to make, sure, make it look like it's easy. You don't want to make it look like you're hurting mm -hmm. or, you know, your face or whatever. Then I would come up. 
into a bicep. That's kind of like my signature move when I twirl my fingers up like that. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure the quads are showing. Yeah. And then you've got the front lat spread. That's a famous one. Isn't oh, it? yes. Oh, yes. I remember growing up, there was a guy <laughs> named, uh, I think his name was... Uh, Sergio mm -hmm. o Olivia, you remember them? Remember that name? No, that's you, long before your time. Long before my time. But he, <laughs> but he, he was back in the days of Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. and uh, we and, and and all those guys. There was a, a black guy that came out. He was probably the first black super mm -hmm. uh, workout guy, okay. like Arnold was. Right, right. Except he was like the next. He was in that same generation. Mm -hmm. Might have been a little younger than Arnold. Sergio Olivia. Okay. And 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 he was just. Well, he's like Arnold. Right. He's I'm huge. Look him up. Yeah. Sergio. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love Arnold. He's famous. Sergio's that's, famous. That's my goal to be Sergio was just to like him, Arnold. except a black version. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to look him up then. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was his. That, that the, was his, the front last spread. Yeah. yeah oh, what yeah. You just did. yeah. That's a good one. I like the bicep. So. Yeah. I'm an yeah. Arnold fan, too. Oh, okay. You know. I love Arnold. Arnold's I mean, great. everybody loves Arnold. Arnold everybody loves Arnold. <laughs> Arnold. They, they do. They do. You know, a lot of boys got started working out when. Those days right. from discovering Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. You know what I mean? That's true. Because it was like, you know, him and, and other ones. There were other ones. Dave, Dra Dave Draper was another guy mm -hmm. back in those days. He was probably before Arnold. Okay. Dave Draper and Larry Scott, Sergio Olivier, mm -hmm. and then Arnold, you know. Yeah, you know your stuff. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, we all <laughs> grew up with that. to pick your brain. We all grew up with that stuff, you know. So, okay, well, let me, is there any, did okay. we miss any then, more? Okay, um, then you would turn to the side here. Get that side chest, and then. Oh, you can tell that your muscles are really tricep. Really, you got you got it going. <laughs> I'm strong. smooth though. I'm smooth, and then you know the. Back. I mean, your legs are just fantastic. Oh yeah, I ran track. My I legs mean, are my. That's my strong point. You, there. Your legs are just absolutely just musc thick muscular yeah. legs. That's that's my strong point. You know, then that rear lat spread. Look at that. Yeah. That's a great shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my legs, they're definitely my strong point. Yeah. I love my quads, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pepper, see, that was beautiful. So, thank you, thank so, you. So, uh, but it's that's very important. And that, yes, that was a workout there. I'm tired. <laughs> well, yeah, people don't realize. I mean, <laughs> and I didn't even do nothing. <laughs> because you're, 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 you're pitting muscle against muscle, right, straining right. to get that, that. And then you have to be in contact with every muscle, like, your forearm, your bicep, your back, your lats. You know, that was the hardest for me, was getting my lats to spread. I had to actually look at thousands of videos of Iris because Iris um, was my inspiration. Who? Iris. She's um, uh, it's a women bodybuilder? Yes, she's a uh, Miss um, Olympia Universe, everything. You mm -hmm. know, if you look her up, she's huge. She's And she's like wanted probably just as much as um, Phil Heath. So she's. She's a big deal. But now I've kind of moved past her because this year I'm actually going to switch over from women's bodybuilding to women's physique. So there's, what's the difference? Um, they kind of created it because the people, they're kind of, the judges are the women. They were getting too big and then they were kind of getting discouraged from it. They're kind of moving past it. So they created women's physique like a couple of years ago. A lot of people are still kind of learning what it is, but their poses are more feminine. Mm -hmm. like it's not we, as much big muscles. Right, like mm -hmm. the poses that we do are the exact same as the poses that the men do right. for men's bodybuilding. So the women's physique are kind of like more, you know, dainty versions uh -huh. of mm -hmm. the uh, women's bodybuilding. But my new inspiration is Dana Lynn Bailey. She was Miss Olympia. She was the first uh, physique Olympia in 2013. And then she actually got second this past year, so in 2014 but she is awesome and it's so good to have a, a couple of it different is divisions. It is because then it, it helps you know when you have something to look at you know okay this is what I'm striving for you know genetics plays a part too so I know I'm not going to look exactly like her because even though we're around the same height and that's another thing that's different from bodybuilding and physique. Bodybuilding goes by weight class physique goes by height so. Oh really? It does. So I'm five even I'd be in like the A class. Whereas, you know, I'd be a lightweight in women's bodybuilding, so. Well, we'd like to follow you, and as you're going along here with yeah. the, the next phase, before we get to the May show, okay. when you get into, uh, the when you start going into the uh, the shred down the mode, shred, yeah. when you come back. Right, and then, and then I, I post everything on social media as well. And so. yeah, and we're on nitique.com, so okay. we're doing these shows. So at the end, before the show, we can have you on to show you just before the show. Okay, Something that would like be that. awesome. So we just, we'll, we'll do that, okay? Okay, okay. okay good. 
Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate me. it. It was a great pleasure meeting you. <laughs> it and was a I'm pleasure sure meeting you. Everybody learned a lot <laughs> from seeing a female bodybuilder getting ready for a yes, show. Yes, and I yeah. want people to know that, you know, women's bodybuilding, they're, they're not all, we're not all like that, you know? It's some of us that are out here that, you know, are positive and we're not trying to look like a, me, a man that's or right. anything well, like that. That's right. Well, you've proven so. that. Right. You know, that you can be strong and, that's the goal, and not you know? look like a man. Right. You know, and exactly. still be feminine. Right. Right, exactly. Okay, Natasha. Yes, sir. <laughs> Donald, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and we'll be back after this. Ingalls Shipbuilding is hiring electricians, structural welders, machinists, ship fitters, pipe fitters, and pipe welders in our Pascagoula, Mississippi site. Signing bonuses available for pipe welders only. Positions are union represented. Come build your career with Ingalls Shipbuilding. Go to www.huntingtoningles.com slash careers or call 888-935-1507. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Nitique. You can catch each episode online at Nitique, N-I-G-H-T-I-Q-U-E dot com. We're archiving all the shows there. And we'll see you next time on Nitique. Thanks for watching.